It's time for a TPK. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Black Magic Craft. This is the first of a new segment that I am calling TPK, which stands for Totally Practical Knowledge. Super clever, right? There's a whole bunch of subjects that I either don't have time to make into a full video or I just have other stuff that needs to come out before that, but they're things I still want to talk about or they're things that I want to talk about, but don't justify a full episode. Couple things I need to address. Things that have been kind of bugging me a little bit because of recurring comments that I see both on videos as well as on different groups. And I just want to touch on them a little bit. The first thing is safety. Okay. Uh, and there's a few things I want to talk about in terms of safety. First thing is cutting stuff with an Ulfa knife or a utility knife. I have seen far too many comments stating that, Oh, be sure to cut away from yourself especially on my videos, because if you watch me work, you will see that I often use the Ulfa knife cutting towards myself very close to my fingers. And I ain't stupid. Okay. You may know already that I am a professional contractor, veteran carpenter. I use an Ulfa knife every single day and I have been for over a decade. I have literally made, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of cuts with an Ulfa knife. There's always one in my pocket when I'm working and in a given work day, depending on what I'm doing, I could make hundreds of cuts in one day, especially doing stuff like drywall. So I am very comfortable with it as a tool. And of those hundreds of thousands of cuts I've made, I've only cut myself, I don't know, two or three times that are worth remembering. And even those weren't that bad. And I cut towards myself. So th this is a kind of a tricky subject to approach because I'm hesitant to give you advice that could end up hurting you. And if you take my advice and use it carelessly, you could hurt yourself. But I want to say that the truth is cutting towards yourself with a sharp knife is often the safest way to cut. And why do I say that? Cause it doesn't really make sense. Does it? Well, every carpenter worth his salt knows that the number one, well, okay. We're going to say the number two thing to making a safe cut is being in a hundred percent control of your tool. It is very dangerous to not be totally in control of what your tool is doing and how it's interacting with the material. And the fact is when you're cutting towards yourself, this is the way that you have the most control because ergonomically it makes the most sense for you to cut towards yourself. You can see the part of the piece you're cutting in front of the blade. Okay. Your blade comes towards you so you can prejudge any micro adjustments that need to be made. When you're cutting away from yourself, you don't see what you're cutting. You are seeing your eyes are following the cut instead of predicting the cut. This is a really important thing. When you're cutting away from yourself, it's also can be really awkward. This is not a good way to hold the knife. This is okay. This is better. But like I said, this advice should be used with a lot of caution. And when you're cutting towards yourself, you have to be in control because when you're in control of your tool, that's when you don't hurt yourself. And this is the same for any tool, table saws, skill saws, drills, what it doesn't matter what the tool is. You have to be in a hundred percent control to keep yourself safe. And I said that was the number two most important thing that every carpenter knows about the safety of a blade. The number one thing is your tool has to be sharp. 
I cannot stand when I see the comments about people worried about using something like a utility knife because it's so sharp, especially Ulfa. Ulfa blades, and the reason I recommend them on my store is because they are far sharper than the stuff you pick up at, say, the dollar store or like an off-brand thing that you might get at Walmart. They are significantly sharper. And the kind of instinctual reaction to a sharp blade is that it's more dangerous than say a cheaper dollar one but that is false while you absolutely could give yourself a far worse cut with a sharp blade than with a dull one the chances of actually cutting yourself increase greatly with a dull blade because when you're using a dull blade you are not in control and that blade can jump, it can move, it can miss. And that is the number one way people cut themselves with blades is using dull blades. Again, this is true of any sort of cutting tool. A table saw, the worst, one of the worst things you can do is operate with a blade that is too dull for the task at hand, because that's when you're gonna get something kicking back. Of course, every time you're using your Ulfa knife, Use caution, be in control, make the cut the way that you can control it best and keep your blade sharp. Now, while we're talking about safety, there is something else that comes up way too often, especially in the different crafting groups. Whenever somebody posts a picture of them using their hot wire tools or some work they did with a hot wire tool, it is inevitable that somebody feels the need to make a comment along the lines of, oh, you better watch out for all those fumes. I hope you didn't lose any brain cells from all the fumes. You need to stop with that comment because misinformation does not help anybody. Fumes. Let's talk for a minute about the fumes of cutting XPS foam with a hot wire tool. Are there some fumes? Yes. There's also some fumes when you make coffee. There's also some fumes when you put on your deodorant. There's also some fumes when you spray your pan down with Pam or when your wife uses hair. Yes, there are fumes to a lot of things we use in our daily lives. It doesn't make them all dangerous. The whole purpose of using a hot wire tool to cut foam, aside from getting nice cuts, is that it is safer and it's safer for a couple reasons. I just talked a lot about cutting yourself with a blade Well, with a hot wire tool, you remove that risk completely. But the other reason that using a hot wire tool is the safest way to cut foam is because the most dangerous thing about working with XPS foam is the fine dust and particulates that can arise from sanding it, even from shaving it those fine particles of dust, breathing those in is not good for you. When you sand XPS foam, it creates a lot of little tiny dust. And even if you're doing a small amount, you're gonna end up breathing some of that in and that's gonna go into your lungs. And it's, I don't know for sure, but it's probably never going to break down. And the truth about XPS is that it does leach chemicals. If you handle XPS foam in a small amount on a hobby sort of scale, it's fine. But having that stuff in your body permanently is not good. So if you're going to sand it, that you got to do outside. I'm not joking. If you're going to do even a little bit of sanding on XPS foam, you should be going outside. And even outside, you should probably be wearing a mask or respirator of some sort because you are the first point that that dust is going to go to even in a breeze and your clothes you want to take some precaution as to not bring all that dust back in with you but if you use a hot wire to cut your foam you remove that risk entirely so what you're left with is some fumes and if you have used a hot wire or you watched my videos where you see me do it you will see that sometimes there is a very small puff of white smoke that comes off the cut. 
it's important to know that XPS foam, when burned, when combusted, emits a black smoke that is very toxic. This is why in construction, in most places, it is illegal or against building regulations to leave XPS foam exposed permanently. It has to be behind some sort of covering because in a fire, the fumes and the, uh, the, uh, the soot from the black smoke when it's combusted is highly toxic. But here's the thing, when you use a hot wire tool, you're not combusting it, you're melting it. You're heating up the foam to the temperature at which it will melt, but not ignite. And that's really important because the vapor that comes off of XPS foam when melted is not the same as what comes off when combusted. And that is why the smoke on it is white instead of black. I've put a considerable amount of time into reading up on this and trying to get factual information. When you melt XPS foam, that white smoke is mostly water vapor because there is a certain amount of water in the material that when you melt is evaporating. There are some other chemicals that are being released at the same time, and it's mostly carbon dioxide. So if you're really concerned about carbon dioxide in a small quantity, you should probably lock yourself in a room and never talk to anyone again because the carbon dioxide coming off their breath could be toxic. That being said, there is also a small amount of carbon monoxide, chlorine, and a few other things that is emitted uh, in that white smoke, but it is in such small quantities that the parts per million on it are irrelevant and your day-to-day -day life going out in traffic or even being in a newly built home or whatever has far greater risks than this tiny little puff of smoke with a little bit of carbon dioxide, tiny bit of carbon monoxide in it. it it's inconsequential. You should, however, take some basic precautions for ventilation, especially if you're gonna do a lot of cutting. Like if you are milling a ton of pieces, then you should open a window, maybe open two windows. And if you're really concerned, set up a fan to blow the vapors past you towards the window. But that is all you need. If you ever see anyone telling you that you need to be using your hot wire tool outside, they are wrong. Okay. Don't worry about it. Take basic precautions that you would using anything. And if you're just going to do a few quick cuts, I wouldn't even bother getting up to open a window. And if you don't believe me and you want to look this up yourself in the description, I'm going to have a link to the MSDS safety sheet for Fomular foam and you can read about it and take that knowledge and do with it whatever you want. Let me said, if you want to cut outside, that's fine. Nobody's business. If you want to feel better about it, but these, comments about how dangerous it is that are based in absolute nonsense, I would like to try to stop. Now, all of that being said, when you use your hot wire tool, if you see a little bit of white smoke, that's okay. But what can happen if you are using the tool incorrectly is you can create some of, in a small amount, that black smoke that is dangerous. And you can do that by having your tool way too hot. And the number one way you can get it is after you complete a cut, if there's a small chunk of foam that gets stuck on the wire and it sits there and it just burns, that's when you can get a small amount of that smoke. So if you see me or any other people using a tool like this professionally, you will notice that as soon as they complete a cut, they will turn the power off to the machine so that any residual foam left on the wire doesn't burn. It just goes cold right away and you can just, you know, clean it off. Proxon actually sells a foot pedal that you can attach to it, I believe. I should double check that. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure you can use a foot pedal so you can turn it on and off instantly. So that's the only thing you really need to be careful about. Oh, wow. I uh, talked about safety for a long time. I thought that would be two minutes. 
<laughs> let's move on. Another comment that I've been getting quite a bit lately is uh, people asking about the paint dropper bottle racks that I have behind me and what they are, where did I get them, did I build them, what's the deal? The answer is a little bit convoluted. John Suski, who runs the channel Dungeons and Glue Sticks, which if you haven't checked out, you should. I'm gonna put a link in the description, go check out his channel. He builds amazing stuff out of foam. Better stuff than I do because he takes a lot more time on his builds than I do. He is a true foam artist, okay? Check out his channel, but more importantly, check out his Facebook. I'm gonna put a link to his Facebook there as well because on Facebook, he does a lot of live streams. He doesn't keep up to date on his YouTube videos as much as I wish he would, but he streams himself working often and his streams, he is making amazing stuff, a lot of commission work, and there is a lot to be learned from those streams. And he's a cool guy to hang out with in them. So just do yourself a favor and check it out. A while ago, he made a video showing how to make a storage rack for dropper bottle paint out of foam core, exactly like those ones there. And again, I'll put a link to that video. So if you want to build one out of foam core, you can. And that on its own was a very cool thing that he did. There is a guy named Gerard Boom who runs a website called shiftinglands.com. And he is also another big, huge user of the Proxen Hotwire table. And he has made a ton of awesome jigs and different things that you can use with the Proxon table that he has designed and he makes out of uh, laser cut MDF. And you can order these and they're awesome, but he and John teamed up and he took John's foam core design and he made a commercially available version out of MDF. And that's what I have there. They are awesome. They're really quick to put together. They're made really nicely with laser cutting precision and they are wonderful and I'm so happy to have them. And I have to thank John because John was nice enough to send me two demo ones to try out. So again, John, thanks for sending me those. And if you were watching this on the Friday that it was released, that means this is your last chance to enter the contest I'm running for this free Proxon hot wire table. I'll put a link in the description for that contest. Go fast, last chance. I am going to announce the winners tomorrow. And on that, I should bid you guys farewell. Of course, if you like this video, hit that like button, drop me a comment below, hit subscribe, check out Black Magic Craft on Facebook, check out my website, blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have an Amazon affiliate store where you can buy all the gear you need to build cool shit. And a small part of all those sales help to fund this channel. If you really, really want to help me and this channel out and you want to say thanks for the work that I'm doing, the best way you can do that is by supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. The funds for my Patreon supporters are the reason that I can continue to invest time into this channel and buy equipment to make it a reality. I got lots of cool rewards for the people who help me out, so please check it out. All right, guys, until next time, cheers.